This is Math 151, and we are going to talk about L'Hopital's rule for, uh, this is a, a rule about limits. I think I'll just start with, with saying what the law states, and then we'll, we'll dig into some implications and some proof of it. So if I have two functions, um, f of x and g of x, we're going to assume they're continuous and uh, differentiable over the interval that we're working on. Additionally, we're going to say that the limit of each of them at the same point is zero. So those are our conditions. And here's what L'Hopital's rule states. So what it's telling us is if we went like f of x divided by g of x, and we take the limit, and these both go to 0, so we end up with a 0 over 0, 0 divided by 0, what we can do is we can take the derivative of both those functions, take the limit again, um, and that will be equivalent to the limit of this. And notice that's a, when we have a zero over zero case. I'm going to add it's also uh, when we have an infinity over infinity case. Um, both of those give us a chance to use a little rule. It doesn't apply if, if these are not what those limits uh, come out to. Infinity over infinity or zero over zero. So this gives us a little tool for digging in. If we have a zero over zero limit, like that's unresolvable, but we could take the derivative of both. And if that gives us something resolvable, we're in good shape. Um, I'll just quick, why does this work? Well, we're taking that, and we know that f of a and g of a are, are zeros. We assume they're continuous, so it must exist in that point. So those must be zeros because the limit as x approaches a is zero. So this would be the same as. those are just zeros, we can subtract them and the limit would be the same. And we're going to do a little sleight of hand and we're doing this on purpose to get a certain result. We're going to multiply both the top and bottom by 1 over x uh, minus a. So we're multiplying by a version of 1. And hopefully both that numerator and that denominator Look familiar to you. That's just a slope, right? That this was our original definition of the derivative. The limit as x goes to a of the change in y over the change in x. And same thing. This is just be the slope of g, the change in g, the change in y and g over the change in x. So if that's true, taking the limit of the whole thing, same as the taking the limit of the pieces. which is the limit as x approaches of this is the derivative, right? That's the definition of derivative. So this would be f prime uh, over g prime, f prime of a over g prime of a. And I could say that's the same as uh, the limit as pro x approaches a of, now I'm just cleaning it up, f prime of x over the limit as x approaches a of g prime of x which is the limit of the pieces is the same as the limit of the whole thing. We started here, we ended up here. That's just what I have written up here. For I'm going to erase that and then we'll do some examples. All right, so here's three different cases. Uh, let's pick them off one at a time. So the limit is x approaches zero of one minus cosine x over x. So if I just plug in the zero and see what happens. Up here I get one over one, which is uh, one minus one, which is zero and zero. So this is, since this is zero over zero, uh, this is a uh, candidate for using L'Hopital's rule. Like if this was five over zero or something, I can't use L'Hopital's rule right away. I might be able to manipulate it, but if it's, since it's zero, zero, I'm good to go. So this would then be the same as uh, the limit as x approaches zero, of the derivative of each of these, right? The derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. Now notice this is not like a quotient rule, right? I'm not taking the derivative of the whole thing, I'm taking the derivative of the pieces. So the derivative of um, one minus cosine derivative of one is zero. Uh, this is a negative cosine, 
Derivative of cosine is negative sine, so this would be negative negative sine, which is sine. And the derivative of x is just 1. And notice I'm still taking the limit of this, right? The limit as x approaches 0 of this. And so now if I plug it in, I have this 1 in the denominator. So I don't have this dividing by 0 issue. And this sine x, uh, if I plug in a 0, that's a 1. So I'm, I'm sorry, that's a 0. So this is 0 over 1. So the answer is 0. So the limit um, of 1 over cosine x over x as x approaches 0 is 0. And notice the way that I got there is I saw that this was a 0 over 0 once I plugged in the 0, right, with the limits approaching 2. And then I just took the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, took the limit of that, and gave me my answer. Uh, let's, let's check out another one. Uh, the limit as x approaches 1 of uh, sine pi over x over natural log of x. If I plug in 1 for each of these, sine of pi, that's a 0. Natural log of 1. That's also a zero, right? Because you do the zero is one. So good. It, it is a it is a uh, candidate for L'Hopital's rule because it's zero over zero. So I'm gonna take the derivative of top and bottom. So I'm not gonna write the d over dx. I'm just gonna say I'm using L'Hopital. And so sine of pi over x. And let's see. I'm gonna have to chain rule that. Uh, that's gonna be. Um, Derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of pi over x is pi. So pi times cosine over natural log of, um, sorry, the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, which if I plug this 1 in, so I have pi times cosine of pi over 1, right, because x is just 1, eliminated at that limit. And uh, pi times cosine of pi, cosine of pi, is negative 1, pi times negative 1, which is negative pi. Cool, so there's that one. Oh, I should have written all this down here. I'm going to move it really quick. And I'm just going to erase it. Uh, limit as x approaches infinity of e to the 1 over x minus 1. So if I try to plug in, plug in, so to speak, infinity, 1 over infinity, you know, 1 over something really big, that, that approaches 0, the limit is 0. Um, e, this is basically e to the um, zeroth power it, when, it, when this denominator is really big. So that's a 1. 1 minus 1 is also 0. So this is 0 over 0. I can use L'Hopital. So I'm taking the derivative of each of these pieces. Uh, the derivative of e uh, to the power of 1 over x minus 1. Well, let's see. It's its own derivative. Right, e to whatever is its own derivative. And then I have to chain rule that. I have to multiply that by the derivative of 1 over x, which is x to the negative 1. So negative, uh, negative 1 over x squared. And that's all over. This is 1 over x. So the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. Well, that's convenient. That divides out. So the limit. As x approaches infinity of e to the 1 over x, um, this right here approaches 0, so e to the 0 is 1. All right, three more examples for us to dig into. So the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x minus x um, over x squared. So sine of 0 is 0. This is 0 over 0 if I just plug it in up top, so 0. On the bottom, x squared is 0. So this is a good um, candidate for L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of top and bottom. Um, this is this is kind of my notation, just so I have don't have to write rewrite you know d over dx again and again in top and bottom. So the derivative of sine x is cosine of x. Uh, the derivative of x is 1. That's over. Uh, the derivative of x squared is 2x. Okay, so I, I applied that, take the derivative of the top and bottom, and I got to here. So if I plug this in, cosine of 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and if I plug it into the bottom, it's 0. I get 0 over 0 again. Well, if when I get 0 over 0, I can use L'Hopital's rule, why don't I just use L'Hopital's rule again?
Like I can keep doing it as many times as I need it. So I'm going to take the derivative um, again of the top and bottom. So I'm going to end up taking the second derivative from the beginning. Let's see. A uh, derivative of cosine of x is negative sine. Derivative of 2x is 2 uh, relative to x. So now if I plug in that 0, um, sine of 0 is 0, so negative 0 over 2 is 0. So the limit of this as x approaches 0 is 0. And notice we just did L'Hopital's rule twice because we had a 0 over 0. Boom, got it again. Now in this case, um, the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x plus 5 or 2x plus 1. And you've been dealing with stuff like this for a while. Like you might see right away that it's three halves um, because x gets really big. This is kind of our asymptote work that we've done. But L'Hopital's work when we have an infinity over infinity case as well. So notice limit as x approaches infinity, this gets really big. This grows without bound. And so does this. This grows without bound as well. This is an infinity over infinity case. So let's apply L'Hopital's to this. So the limit as x approaches infinity, I've taken the derivative of the top and bottom. Uh, the derivative of 3x plus 5 is 3. The derivative of 2x plus 1 is 2. So the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 halves, well, there's no x's in here. 3 halves is always 3 halves. So notice L'Hopital's rule. Um, we don't have to do as much hand waving to find those asymptotes that we've had to do in the past. And then how about this one? The limit as x approaches 0 of natural log of x over cotangent of x. As, x, as this approaches 0 from the right, uh, natural log of x, you know, that, that graph looks like this. So this is headed towards negative infinity. And cotangent, um, as this approaches 0, cotangent gets really big as well. So that approaches infinity. So we have an infinity over infinity. K, infinity. So let's uh, give this a go. Uh, in derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Derivative of cotangent of x, uh, negative cosecant squared. All right, so then this would be the same as uh, the limit as x approaches 0, uh, 1 over negative x times cosecant, sorry, cosecant squared of x. So this is a 0, but as this approaches 0, cosecant uh, approaches ne negative infinity. So I have this ne 0 times negative infinity case. Oh, it's kind of ugly. So you know what I could do? I could I could manipulate this a little bit. I know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine squared. So this would be the same as um, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of, since cosecant is 1 over sine, sine squared over x. And notice that's a really clever sleight of hand. Um, before it, we had this denominator where we were trying to go to zero, um, zero times negative infinity, or we would just, like have this infinity over infinity again, right? So what we can do then is we can now do this. And if we plug in zeros, sine of zero is a zero, uh, zero x equals zero is zero. So now we have zero over zero again. Let's do L'Hopital's rule again. So sometimes you can do a little bit of manipulation to turn what you have into a zero over zero case. So I'm going to take the derivative of top and bottom, numerator and denominator. Uh, let's see, that would be, do, 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 uh, I'm going to have to chain rule this, uh, 2 sine x times cosine of x. And the derivative of negative x is negative 1. So now if I plug this in, um, 1 times 0 times 2 is 0, 0 over 1, so the limit is 0. Yeah, we got that. So let's take a look at um, a case that might be a common mistake for some folks when they first see L'Hopital's rule. What I'm about to do is wrong, so don't do this. No. 
So anyways, here's what you would, here's what the mistake is. I'm just gonna take the derivative of the top and bottom of this. So the limit as x approaches one of two x over three is two thirds. Do you see what's wrong? L'Hopital's work only works when you have a zero over zero case. Like if I plug one into this right away, I have one squared plus five over three plus four, six sevenths. That's the, that's the actual limit. L'Hopital's rule is only going to help me get help me when I have a zero over zero case. I didn't have a zero over zero case. So this is nonsense. So again, um, make sure that you have a zero over zero case before you start taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. Sometimes we have some other cases. For example, sometimes we have zero times infinity, uh, which we which we had a case like that before this one. Or we might have like infinity minus infinity or um, infinity to the zero, or zero to the infinity, things like that. Um, and what I wanna do is I want to see how we can manipulate those and then use L'Hopital's rule. We have something like this, uh, the limit as x approaches zero from the right um, of x times the natural log of x. Remember again, natural log looks like this. So as we approach zero from the right, um, this goes to infinity but x goes to zero. So this is a case where we have zero times infinity. Now what we can do is we can manipulate it or try and figure out kind of a crafty way to turn it into maybe a zero over zero or uh, infinity over infinity. And what I'm going to do, I think this is so clever, is rewrite, think about this x. x is the same as one over one over x. Oh, do you see that? Like one divided by one over x is the same as one times x, which is x. So what I can do is I can rewrite this as a limit as x approaches zero from the right, natural log of x over one over x. And now it's in a form where if I plug those both in, uh, plug in the zero into both of those, I have an infinity over infinity case. And then from here, uh, or a negative infinity over infinity case. And from here, I can use L'Hopital's rule. So again, clever, clever little sleight of hand, I think, uh, to take this x and rewrite it as one over one over x. So the derivative of natural log of x is one over x, and the derivative of one over x is negative one over x squared. And if I think about that, I can I can reduce this, right? This is the same as, I can simplify that. One over x squared is the same as um, negative x squared. So negative x squared over x is just negative x. That limit would be zero. Again, notice what I did is I rewrote this the same way I had rewritten that, right? Dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. So this was like, x squared, negative x squared times one over x, which I rewrote as negative x squared over x. All right, two more to get at. Uh, the limit as x approaches zero of x times cotangent of x. So as x approaches zero, this x uh, tends towards zero, but this cotangent has, tends towards uh, an infinity. So let's rewrite it. Now, sometimes the first way that you rewrite it doesn't work out. So let's try what we know. You know, I think after the last problem, our instinct would probably to go, oh, I can just rewrite this as uh, the limit as x approaches zero, cotangent of x over one over x. And notice that gives us an infinity over infinity. So if we go uh, L'Hopital for that, as x approaches zero, uh, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. Derivative of 1 over x, negative 1 over x squared. And it's looking ugly again. Like, it doesn't really get me anywhere. I have an infinity over infinity again. Like, I could try and do L'Hopital's rule again, but my derivatives are starting to get pretty ugly here with the, neg the negative cosecant squared. So I think that what I'm going to do then is rewrite it a different way. Like if that pathway starts to kind of fall apart for me, 
why don't I keep the x in the numerator? And I could write the cotangent. I could write it as a tangent in the denominator, right? That's a possibility. Maybe that gets me somewhere. Or I could write this as just cosine over sine. Right, so I'm just rewriting cotangent as cosine over sine. Um, notice if I plug in a zero, this is a zero over zero. So that's good. That gives me a uh, L'Hopital. So the derivative of x times the cosine of x, that's going to be a product. So cosine of x is just one. So I have cosine of x. And then it would be a plus x times the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine. So negative sine. And the derivative of sine is cosine. And if I plug in a zero in the bottom, this is a one. And in the top, this is one minus zero. So one over one. So that limit uh, would be one. So again, the, the point of that problem is sometimes you pick a path and it's just not great. So pick another path, you know, kind of retrace your steps. Let's pick up this one. Limit as x approaches 0 from the right. 1 over x squared. That Well, that goes to infinity. That grows without bound. And then 1 over tangent. Uh, tangent also grows without bound as this approaches 0. So this would be like an infinity. Uh, 1 over tangent goes to infinity, right? Like 1 over 0. So it's not a, a, it's a case, right? But it doesn't let me get automatically to both. So I want to rewrite this as a fraction. So what I think I'm going to do is find a common denominator and then just do that subtraction. So I'm going to do some arithmetic here. A uh, common denominator would be x squared times tangent. So I'm going to multiply this one by tangent over tangent, this one by x squared over x squared. So that gives me tangent x minus x squared over x squared times tangent squared. And notice if I plug in the zero now, zero minus zero is zero. Um, zero times anything is zero. So, and the tangent, I thought to be an x. A uh, tangent is zero, zero. So this is a zero over zero. So let's uh, let's run it through L'Hopital. Let me take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. Derivative of tangent of x to secant squared minus uh, derivative of x squared is 2x. And that's going to be over uh, x squared times tangent x. I'm going to have to do a uh, product rule here. So derivative of x squared is, is 2x, and that's multiplied by tangent, plus um, the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. So I've got that. So let me think about this. As this grows and gets uh, towards zero, that's a zero. This is a one. So up on top, I have a one. And notice that this is going to, this is a zero, and this is a zero. So this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is going to grow without bound. Uh, this is going to, that limit goes to infinity, goes to positive infinity. All right, a couple more for us to dig into here. Uh, the limit of x to the 1 over x as x approaches infinity. So notice this would be like an infinity to the 0 power. Oops, sorry. Uh, 0, yeah, infinity to the 0 power. All right, this grows without bound, so this becomes really tiny. This gets really big. So really big to the power of really small. Um, yeah, so let's let's check this out. Let's see what this does. Now. It's not in a zero over zero case or an infinity over infinity case. So it's a type, but it's not set for L'Hopital's rule. So the problem is we have this thing in an exponent. So what we want to do is we want to think about a tool that helps us like pull out exponents. And that's natural log. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say uh, y equals the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the 1 over x. Right, so y, this thing equals y. And I did that so that now I can natural log both sides. I have two sides in equation to natural log. So I brought that in so I could do this. 
So I know that the natural log of y is now equal to the natural log of this limit. And natural log is just a function. So I could say this is the same as the limit of the natural log. And I can say that because notice like the limit is really about what this becomes a value of. Like let's say this becomes 10. I would be going natural log of 10. But here I'd be going, this still becomes a 10 as x uh, you know, grows. 10 is hypothetical, it's not the answer. Natural log of 10. So these are equivalent. This is just a function. This is the value that, that, that's changing from the limit. So from here, now what I can do is I can take advantage um, that I know if I have an exponent, it can come out, right? So like if I have natural log of y equals the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x times the natural log of x. Clever. Look at that. That gets that out of there. And now, like, this still isn't in a fractional case, but it's set to be because this is 1 over x times natural log of x. So I could say natural log of x over x, right? 1 over x times it. That's like over 1. So same thing. Now, let's see, if I plug in an infinity, this becomes a um, infinity over infinity. Yeah, yeah, because natural log looks like this. It's growing, so as it gets bigger, it gets bigger. So infinity over infinity, that's a L'Hopital candidate. So natural log of y would be the same as the limit as x approaches infinity. Uh, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Derivative of x is 1, so this would be natural log of y equals the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. And we know that this is um, 0, right? The limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. 1 over really big. As this gets bigger, this gets closer and closer to 0. So the natural log of y equals 0. Natural log is the reciprocal of e. That means that y must equal e to the 0, which is 1. Oh, my gosh. So as x gets really big, this thing goes to 1. Cool. I love it. All right, another example. The limit as x goes to infinity of x to the power of 1 over natural log of x. Uh, this is another infinity to the 0 type problem. And again, the, the problem, the issue is the exponent. So let's take advantage of natural log. So I'm going to write that this thing is equal to y. y is just a nice place, placeholder for me to remember that I brought that natural log into the problem. Oops, sorry. The limit equals y. How about I take natural log of both sides? Natural log is just a function not affected by the limit, so I can tuck it inside the limit. Natural log allows me to take out that exponent, kind of those log manipulation rules. That one's tricky. Notice we took this out, and we're left with natural log of x. So it's 1 over the natural log of x times the natural log of x. That's just 1. Right? So, um, something divided by itself, natural log of x divided by natural log of x is just 1. So natural log of y equals the limit as x approaches infinity of 1. Well, x can do whatever it wants. 1 is always 1. So this is 1. Inverse of natural log is e, so y would equal e to the 1. So y equals e. So you let x run to infinity of x to the power of 1 over the natural log of x, you're going to get e. All right, so get this practice in. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I think that L'Hopital's rule is pretty fun to do. Message me with questions or post them in the forum.